Huh. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs. On today's episode, we're reviving a 94 Ford Ranger. Now, I know that might seem like completely normal traffic and not something that fits our channel at all, but not only was this the truck I grew up in, but this is the one I later drove to high school. It blew a transmission sometime in college, and it's been sitting waiting for me to find a very specific transmission ever since then. And we have one, and it's time to bring this out of the weeds and put it back on the road. Let's see what it takes to do a 90 ZFI revival. This is the future happening now. Before we get started here, let's pump the brakes a little bit and talk about this 94 STX and the history it has in my family. In the fall of 2002, my dad picked up this cheap Ford Ranger that had been crushed by a tree and was in need of some bodywork. Having done that his whole life, this was no problem. Dad stripped the truck apart, I of course helped, and soon enough the truck was back together and on the road once again. For years, Dad drove this thing back and forth every day to work, and I remember it driving around for the majority of my childhood. However, after years of service, the Ranger got parked due to some issues and forgotten about in the front yard for about six years until one day I needed a truck to make it to school and work, so I did my first revival out of pure necessity and put the Ranger back on the road. For the next three years, I drove the shit out of this truck. I put on easily 20,000 miles, hauling everything from motorcycles to four-wheelers to whole golf carts in the back of the truck. If it wasn't romping down the gravel or sideways in the snow, there was a good chance it was a couple feet off the ground. Okay, we're gonna jump the Ranger. We're doing 45. Here we go. Oh, f Oh, f that was a poor decision. Oh my god. In the winter of 2017, while on a trip back from college in the Ranger, it unfortunately ran out of transmission fluid from a leak I had not detected and inevitably burned up the front bearing. I'd had the transmission out the year prior for a slave cylinder, so I didn't think it'd be that big of a deal. But as it turns out, I could not find a transmission for this truck. In fact, it took me three years to find one locally and affordable. During those three years, of course, our YouTube stuff kicked off, I got bigger, more dependable trucks to haul trailers, and the Ranger sat forgotten once again in the backyard. It's been 10 years since I did the first revival on this truck, and after sitting for another seven, it's time for the second. Let's get this sucker to the shop and put the Ranger back on the road. Okay, there we go. Uglier than I remember it. The paint has not held up well to sitting outside since 2017. I looked it up. So it's been, ooh, it's been seven years since 2017. Mm. That don't sound right. Ooh, I wondered. Bastards got my registration. Doing a revival on my own car. I got old. Like this looks like shit we pull out of a barn. They ate my 1994 Ranger manual. This is weird. Like usually we pull this stuff out and be like, oh, when was it last registered? Uh, to me, in 2017. <laughs> oh, I'm old enough to have my own barn fine level vehicles. Ow. Look at this. Look at this. Old receipts. With my own signature on them. They're all crinkled up and look like they've been in a barn for 30 years. Oh, shit! That's from the time I gotta go up with the Golden Knights at Drill one time in Davenport when they came to the air show. And they stole my patch when they jumped out the window. Or the door in the back of the plane. It was really cold. Let's throw some power at this and make sure everything, or anything, still works. Oh, we got some sparkies. Let's see if anything comes to life inside. It's got mm. fuel. Oh, okay. The clock is on. The clock is on. Let's find a good flavor of copyright music, please and thank you. Ha! <laughs> 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 Freebird! <laughs> oh yeah! Oh, this is happening! The Rangers coming back, baby! Poetic. For the last seven years, this truck has essentially been listening to just the beginning of the song of Freebird. And now that it's ready to get back on the road, the fun part starts. All right, let's get this son bitch in the air and get a transmission in it. Oh, I'm so excited. All right, here's all our hardware sorted out. As you can see, it's been in better shape before, so we're gonna have to do a little cleanup. Guessing those are bell housing. I uh, don't know what these are. Sure, we'll figure that out. No idea what the eight of these are. We got big nuts, small nuts, and then I'm assuming that's cross member. Before we put the new transmission in, we wanted to take the time to take the old clutch out and put a new one in its place on a freshly turned flywheel. Angus popped our clutch off, I removed the flywheel, and threw it on the Benpack combination brake lathe and got to work at turning the surface. Alright, so we've been saying it for years. 
You finally get to see it. Yes, the Ranger Ben Pack combination brake lathe that does flywheels as well as drums and discs. <laughs> Difference already. Hear those spots it's hitting? Those are hot spots that the clutch is like hard in the metal on. You'll see them after the pass. It's pretty crazy. Alright, there's our first pass done. See all these right here? These shiny spots? That's where the clutch has gotten hot and hard in the metal. And you can hear it when you're cutting it. It cuts way slower right here, and you can feel it. It's way higher. So we gotta do a few more passes until all those hot spots are gone. And then we'll have a properly resurfaced flywheel. Let's run her again. Hey, 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 there we go. That looks fantastic. You'll love to see it. Getting some more life out of old parts. No reason to replace that at all, but it definitely did need resurfaced. That way when we get a new one of these, it can sit on there and mate properly and get the most performance out of it. With our flywheel done, we reinstalled it, popped the old pilot bearing out, and put a new one in its place. Once that was out of the way, we were ready to hang the new clutch and get ready for the trans install. This has a concentric slave, which is around the input shaft, which means if your slave cylinder goes out, you get to pull the whole transmission out of the truck. We replaced the clutch so that we never have to take this off and do this again. We're gonna do the same thing with the slave cylinder. This one might be just fine, but a new one's 60 bucks to confirm that I hopefully Never have to take this off and do this again. So let's go ahead, pop this guy off, and bolt a new one in place. All right, two 10 millimeter head bolts. This should slide straight out. Now it's time to install the new one. This is a very difficult task. Take notes. Installed. Good job. This is why I pay you the big bucks. Oh, yeah. Well, good news, Angus. It's already done. So these plugs right here, which are supposed to look like this, three rubber plugs on these M5ODs, they shrink from the transmission fluid and they start to leak. Eventually you'll get low on fluid. In this case, someone's been in here. I mean, we got RTV all over this output chunk here. And someone's already done the mod and hammered in some Welsh plugs. Little frost plug looking deals. You can get them on eBay. But that's already been done. So thankfully, this sucker's ready to go in. Sweet. Let's hang it. I'm so ready for this. I've never been more ready for anything in my life. All right, let's hang a transmission. Usually I would do this rolling around on the ground, bleeding and cussing in a garage that was about two foot wider than the whole truck. So for the first time ever, this might go pretty okay. Good, good, good. Just a bit, down a little bit. There, clear. Okay. Straighten up. Oh yeah. Don't you ever put us on the ground. I don't know, dude, it's awful. Okay, we're near. Alright, go for it. Oh, did it! What? What did we do? Oh, uh, we pushed on it. Well, I'm not gonna lie, that sucked, but that was by far the easiest and fastest this transmission's ever gone in this truck. When in doubt, have a friend. If you don't have friends, buy one. So, to get these top bastards on these ranges, though, it's best to just let the whole trans and everything sag. Don't try to support it, or else it'll be impossible to get those top bolts. But these are the exact tools. I mentioned this in the last video, but I bought these long extensions to do the transmission by Ranger in high school. And what you want to do is you want to go over the top of the transmission and reach way up front and grab the bell housing. That's the best way to uh, tighten these guys and loosen them. Now you're older and uglier and smarter. <laughs> okay, two more from the front. We're ready to move on to the next component, which is probably starter and all the wiring. All right. Got a brand new starter to go on, mostly because we can't find the old one. That is the one thing we lost, the starter and one of these bolts. On these replacement starters, you have to cut the old wire and crimp and heat shrink the new connector on because apparently the old wires were known for causing some issues and you know, issues being fires. So... While I continued assembling things underneath the truck, Angus started working on our brakes. Oh, well, look fun. They are not super fun. For some reason, this driver's side front brake line going to the caliper shares a T-block with the uh, oh. other front brake line, so that's... It is the union between the it two? It is the union. The hose is the union. It speaks silly. On the bright side, you've had a 
pretty substantial leak of something over the years, and it's kept these nice and free. I didn't even struggle. You gotta love a good, I'm assuming, power steering leak. Eventually, we were able to hang the transfer case and install the front and rear drive shaft. This is one of the few projects I've ever done where I can compare doing this with a lift and on the floor, and our Ben Pack two post lift was making this inconceivably easier. Uh, Dad cut the cat off. Don't worry. I went through with the die grinder and put in two plates so that it's all powered, oriented, shaped. It's coned. I, I can see the weld marks on the inside, so I don't know again. She's only got a buck forty-five, so I gotta gotta get what I can out of it. I didn't come to work ready to deal with this today, but Before. this is threaded pipe. Again, wasn't me. <laughs> that was dad digging through the scrap pile because the cat fell off. All right, the exhaust is on. A little bit of a fight and clip some threads, but we got her done. Angus has a new line on this side. He's tightening her down. Good luck to you, sir. Thanks. I have attacked this rotor with the wire wheel, cleaned up the surfaces a little bit. These should deglaze and start working just fine. I am going to knock these slide pins out and uh, clean up and regrease the caliper slide because I mean, it probably moved, but they probably won't love it. So get these off. All you gotta do is get a punch and punch these guys out. Again, since these are basically brand new, they came out really easy. You know what's funny? Back in the day on study hall in high school, I would go sit in a computer lab and look at videos of how to fix stuff on this truck and learn stuff about how to repair things on cars and stuff. Now here I am years later, making those videos. Who to thunk? What a wild world. That's why I try to do the best I can to teach you guys the stuff I wish I knew when I was your age that I could easily find in a video. The things that took me years to learn that lesson, I'd like to come out with right away and save someone the trouble somewhere else. With that being said, let's get this sucker cleaned up. You want to clean there? On top, on top back here, same with this, and then same on the caliper. Also take some brake clean and clean these guys off. This is just old anti-seize that's not actually rust. Either way, once that's all done, I can go ahead and re anti these, put it all back together, and that'll work perfect. Much better way to do this. Don't go straight on or else it'll just drive it. Go to a bit of an angle so it's always scrubbing. Just let the whole drum roll. Beautiful. How goes it sir? Well going okay. I'm trying to replace the uh, front shocks now. I managed to break the stud off that mounts it to the lower mm. trailing arm, so that'll be a fun fix for us later. <laughs> nope, let's say that's good enough. Give her the old weld. Give her the old weld, yeah. That'll do it. Yeah, we'll grind that down, throw a ton of washers on that side. And... <laughs> yeah, surely that'll hold. All the weight's on the part that we didn't weld, so. Maybe, yeah. but don't call me sure. <laughs> hey, that's looking good. Hey, it's better now. Yeah, weld some threads on there, sure actually worked. Magic. Not that I gotta do at any point during that. I did. Don't you worry. <laughs> I did it enough for both of us. <laughs> well, for personal motivation, let's uh see if the pump runs. I'm gonna guess no way in hell. Huh. huh. Why at no spin? That's our brand new starter. <laughs> yeah, that's the one it's all corroded. Try now. Okay, my turn. There we go. I saw something in a zip tie and bias ply video once. Where they had a truck with a fuel pump that was stuck and they did this. They took compressed air to the Schrader valve and knocked the pump loose. No. What? Fuel pump now. Still nothing. Give her a crank. Maybe she's got some. Pr oh, you can't do that. That's right. Our fuel pump is determined to be dead. So let's uh, feed her manually. Come on, the old turd. Oh, 
think you have to press the clutch to get spark. <laughs> still runs. I think we're going to stop here for today. Let's come by in the morning and pop the bed off and do a fuel pump. See you then. Today's video is brought to you by HelloFresh, the fun, easy, and affordable way for you to enjoy homemade meals. If you're trying to save money, eat better, and stress less, HelloFresh is here to help. Say hello to fresh ingredients and chef-crafted recipes at a price you'll like delivered right to your door. Ditch the meal planning blues and the grocery store run with quick, convenient recipes. Simply choose your meals and select your delivery date. HelloFresh handles the meal planning and shopping, so all you have to do is open your weekly box of fresh, pre-proportioned ingredients and step-by-step -step recipes to get cooking. And if you guys are busy as heck like we are and you're tight on time, turn to HelloFresh's quick and easy meals. These are 15-minute recipes designed to help minimize mealtime stress and cleanup that are even quicker than delivery. Say no to staring blankly in the fridge wondering what to make for dinner. Give Hello fresh a try and dig into their biggest menu yet with over 45 recipes to choose from every week and best of all something new when you guys sign up today you'll unlock free dessert for life satisfy your sweet tooth with a decadent dessert of your choice in every hello fresh box for free if you guys are ready to save time and stress in the kitchen go to hellofresh.com and use the code jyd sweet for free dessert for life. One dessert item per box while subscription is active. That's code JWD Sweet at HelloFresh.com for free dessert for life. All right, let's get back to the video. We're about to initiate a day filled with pure violence. Starting right now. I have a gun. <laughs> Step one for today, let's get this bed off and get a fuel pump in this thing. Give her hell. <laughs> With the bolts out of the way, we disconnected the wiring harness and removed the tailgate. After that, we were able to lift the bed off and set it on some tires so we could access the fuel pump. The answer is completely rusty and screwed. Wow. In just seven years, this thing is junk. Just junk. All right, well, I'll get something to suck all that out. That should be pretty easy. Do you need a Greco pneumatic? Air operated transfer pump? Do you have a Greco pneumatic air operated transfer pump? For legal reasons, I have to say no. What about for helpful reasons? No. Damn it. Using some hose, a coolant jug, and the shop vac, we rigged up a system to suck all the fuel out. It worked pretty good right until the end where it clogged with tar. This must be that tar that forms in the bottom of fuel tanks and glues up the whole system. Dad's Holdsmobile, when we brought it back from Kansas, went 200 miles and it just stopped working, stopped moving fuel. And this was in the whole bottom of the tank. And it took 200 miles for this to eventually get sucked up and gum up the entire fuel system. Oh God, look at that. Perfect example. Filled the tube the shape of a tube with tar that could not be moved. Once we were done playing with the goo, we put the new fuel pump in and hooked everything up, excited to see if the truck would run on its own. I think I heard a pump. I don't know, we'll find out. this exhaust manifold missing all of its bolts which we have an idea for either way there we go 
The Ranger runs for the first time in seven years, and it has a transmission hook to it. Before we put the bed back on, we had a couple things we wanted to do yet. The first of those is replacing the passenger side shackle on the springs. Now, the Rangers are really common for this, and if you ever see one where the tailgate's all crooked, yet the front of the bed is level, that means the rear shackle has rusted out and the spring is up against the bottom of the bed. My right side shackle did this years ago, and I fixed it then, but I figured while this bed is still off, let's go ahead and knock out the driver's side too, because it also had a bunch of rust holes in it. Now, this job is pretty tricky, but eventually I was able to sandwich the new shackle bushing into place, get everything hooked up, and we we're good to go. This morning we are back on the Ranger, working on this. I am currently putting on a new starter solenoid. Angus is putting our new filler neck in place on the fuel tank. And we are waiting on tires to be mounted. So we can go pick those up and get the sucker on wheels and get it outside to paint the frame. Yeah, it's a thunderstorm right now. I don't know quite how we're gonna do that one, but. Well, that's easy, we'll save on water this way. Yeah, we'll scrub it in the rain. Just like the old Junkyard Digs videos. Either way, uh, it's been a good three day week in here. We moved Angus into his new house. Yay! <laughs> it was a lot of cleaning. It, the guy smoked for like 30 years in there, so it was, the ceiling was black. Clean now, Angus has a home to live in. This crab has found a new shell. <laughs> Yeah, bit of a slow morning here. Nice rainy day, so just kind of tinkering along on small stuff, finishing up things on the Ranger. Oh, we should be able to bleed the brakes and clutch now. We got a oh, yeah, absolutely. We're new bent. wheel cylinders on the rear, so. Ah. After bleeding the brakes and clutch, we took some time to change the oil, check all the differentials for fluid, fill the transmission, and change all the fluid in the transfer case. Well, I don't feel super good about that. <laughs> it's I don't an idea. feel terrible about it this was your high school truck which means high school rules apply <laughs> get the c clamps out for the exhaust leak the c clamps and the duct tape that's all she needs back in high school i ran a set of bfg uh, original bfg all-terrain tas on this I was gonna go with the BFGs again for the KO2s, but they are very spendy. General Grabber makes the ATX, which is, as you can see, a very similar tread, has some sidewall patterns, and is very deep. They've also gotten pretty expensive. These were like 230 a tire, 225. So they're only a little bit cheaper than the old BFGs, but they're still cheaper. All right, let's get these suckers on there. This is why I was never in basketball. With the new tires in place, the moment had finally come. For the first time in seven years, I crawled back into the cab of my Ranger, fired it up, and drove it under its own power. truck outside it was time to start on the final steps. We started things off by washing the engine bay in the frame. After that we dug into the interior because it smelled really bad of mouse piss. God damn Angus you vacuumed the seats right out I was just gonna say somebody sucked our seats away. <laughs> Unfortunately there is only one way to get mice smell out of a vehicle and that is to take it all the way to the steel. We gotta pull the entire interior out of this truck to get all the mouse nests and mouse piss out of it, out of the HVAC system, out of the dash, underneath the carpet, the carpet, headliner, everything has to come out so that we can scrub this all with soap and water and then it'll be good to go. Oh. Ooh, there we go. Hmm. That's why we're going this deep. While Angus scrubbed the floor pans, I primed and undercoated the exposed part of the frame so we could put the bed back on. After letting the truck dry all night, we came in the next morning, and unfortunately, the interior still reeked of mice. We decided they were living in the HVAC system, and unfortunately, that meant we had to pull the dash. Angus volunteered to tackle that job while I worked on scrubbing all the interior pieces. All right, I think I got it now. There you go. Oh. That only took oh, all day. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. That would have stunk forever and ever. Uh, it still stinks now. I'll how's have you the, know. How's the inside? Oh yeah, they were living in there. Holy yeah. cow. They've been around. Nothing active, but oh, there's a mud dauber nest in there. So I'm going to get this pad off because I think they've been... Oh! Dude. <laughs> yeah, they've been getting some, some housing material. This is the Menards of mice. <laughs> this is where they're getting their materials from. We'll take that off, clean that down too. Yeah, we'll scrub the entire interior now. With one more door panel, we're down to full steel, so. And at that point, 
throw a 351 wins. What the hell? That's nowhere I'm closer to doing that. Ready to just. What? We'll have to get a different transmission, which is the whole reason we did <laughs> any of this. <laughs> I thought we just wipe it down and put it back together. I don't like that plan, but all right, you're the boss. <laughs> Turns out here and there, there are covers that you can remove on the Ford Ranger to wash out the cowl and remove any uh, stuff from it to get the drains open. You know, like sticks and scrubs and stuff. <laughs> Nothing really. <laughs> Now this is something you should not just do on your Ford Ranger full of mouse crap, but something you should do on every car. Pop these off. They're on every vehicle. I don't know where they are in every vehicle. I don't know what car you're working on. Google it. Don't email me. <laughs> <laughs> and it will tell you faster than you can write me an email. Give it a Google. Figure out where these are. Pop them off and flush out your cowl drains. It helps keep your cowl from rusting out and keeping water and stuff from getting down underneath your dash. By the way, if it ever rains, you get water on the floor. It's your cowl is leaking somewhere. This in here. Oh god. It's Kevin all going into the cab. Kevin, you blowed it up. Yeah, Ew. you get the vacuum. I'll get the hose. We didn't think this would be where the majority of the work of this truck landed, but it took us all of two or three days to clean the interior of this truck. We scrubbed everything, carpet shampooed all the interior components, and then spent at least a full afternoon on the carpet itself. Either way, eventually it was time to start reassembling things, and the last piece left was a new headliner. Okay, a uh, new life hack. We needed headliner material, and the usual speaker box stuff from O'Reilly's was too thick, so we came to Joanne Fabrics. They actually have a whole thing of actual foam backed headliner. And on top of that, if you guys saw the F100 video, one of the things that we did was shove hunks of foam into the corners to make it all quiet. I didn't know where to buy it, but now I do. Look at all that stuff. This is the other stuff that Tom used for sound deadening. Right here, yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Okay, definitely gonna have to remember this. This is a life hack for interiors. With this stuff being much thinner, it was much stretchier, so we were able to hit it with the adhesive glue and push it into place on this curvy headliner just fine. The best part of all was this stuff was on sale and almost a perfect match to the original interior. With the headliner out of the way and everything cleaned up ready to go, we started on reassembling the interior. We did it. You know what, on camera, it looks like an actual window. <laughs> it doesn't in real life. This looks like two pieces of plexiglass and a trench coat pretending to be a window. That's a whole ordeal right there. It's about to be when it blows in on us on the <laughs> interstate. And speaking of the interstate, Angus, we've adjusted fire. We have come up with a road trip for the end of this video. We're going down to see Dalton this weekend for the enduro races, and we need something to drive. Obvious answer. The 98. Yes. <laughs> Actually. But less smart, not so obvious answer. Hyperola. No, the Ranger, I guess we're taking the Ranger. I could not find any actual back glass. None of the junkyards have one and no one makes it anymore unless I want to buy it off eBay. So I ran down the Menards, got a couple of sheets of acrylic. Turns out the answer would have been plexiglass or polycarbonate because this stuff's really brittle mm -hmm. and that's definitely going to explode on the first bump. Oh, I never even thought about the, any shift. Oh, we've got plenty of slack, Kevin. That's Don't true. you worry. That's Somebody true. undercut this uh, acrylic a little bit. Oopies. We got flex room. So I think it'll be fine with that. It's just, you know, all the pressure behind oh, the cab. That's, that's what I got this for. Oh, good. Our backup window. All right, let's get the interior finished up in this thing and then hit the road all the way south of Kansas City, like three and a half hours. You know what else I is think gonna four. hit the road? This windshield. No. <laughs> there it is. A fully cleaned interior. The carpet still could be better. The insulation's got some smells, but I've got something to fix that. It's just... Oh yeah, yeah. There's some air freshener in here. Woohoo! All right. Now we all feel better. Hell yeah! We just turned the H back on to see if the AC worked, and it needed to recharge. Nothing really came out of the vents. Weird. Weird. We just put a bl new blower mower on this, literally yesterday. It's not blowing any air. That was weird. We've, we're fiddling under the dash, pulling the levers, pushing the doors. Nothing's making a difference. The blower motor that came is one that needs to be hardwired instead of using the connector. So Angus matched the colors, yep, black to black, black and orange. So we came in, cut the wires, swapped the polarity to be opposite colors of what they were at matched to the factory, and there we go. Now we got a ton of air. You know what's funny? The whole thing. <laughs> 
This is not the first time I've seen this. In fact, this fixes a problem that I ran into years ago and could not figure out. Remember that diesel flatbed, like IDI we had? Oh yeah, the, bull the nose? new shop truck. Yeah, the shop truck from a long time ago, back when you got your F100. Yeah. I put a new blower motor in it and fixed the AC on there to like teach myself how to do it, and it never blew hard. The blower motor run at all the speeds, but there was never a lot of air. I guarantee it was the same exact problem. The factory that made that blower motor had it wired backwards. Yeah, they are both from O'Reilly's, and that's exactly what the problem was with that truck too. So I guess if you put a new blower motor in and it sucks, flip the polarity. That way it'll blow. That way it'll blow. <laughs> no, that's just it is it was blowing in both directions. There was still, there was only half that amount of air coming out of the dash, but there was still air coming out of the dash, which was weird. Squirrel cages work in mysterious ways. I guess so. There, there's your learning point for this video. All right, now let's finish this up and hit the road. Okay, see you on. Push the button. There we go. Come on, break it in. Break it in. Damn, I am freezing. It is. <laughs> that is frigid air. There you go. 38 degrees. <laughs> That's a cold AC. <laughs> All I did was put a single can back in it. Let's hit the road. The Rangers back, baby. Here we are, slowly approaching speed for the first time in seven years. She still drives excellent. That front and rear sway bar, this thing always handled great. And the violently underpowered three liter meant that you were always hard on the throttle to maintain whatever speed you had chosen. None of that's changed, it's all exactly the same. It smells fantastic in here finally and the headliner looks great. The interior came out really, really nice. Like, I don't think this truck has ever been this clean in the time that I've owned it, so that's fantastic. We gotta go home, drop the olds off, load all my stuff up into the truck, and we are southbound. Let's do it. Man, this feels good to be back. Except for, I am much larger now. I don't, I don't quite fit in this as good. Oh, the shift knob. The shift knob fell off in my hand. Come on, old girl. Come on, you can do it. Man, is that like a south wind or something? This thing is fighting to do 75. <laughs> I mean 70, actually. The speedometer's off a little bit because of my tire size. This is going to be a really long trip south. Really? Oh, yeah, there's a really strong southerly wind. That Oldsmobile's looking more and more enticing. All right, we're all packed up and ready to hit the road. One thing left to do, the changing of the guard. Yeah, she's got a little life left in her. Let's do it, 258 miles. All right, what do you think? It's uh, it's pretty close quarters, it I'm is. not gonna lie. It is a little cramped in here. It's a little obnoxious. Yep. So you did this in high school, huh? Yep. This exhaust? Yep. This was you, eh? Uh-huh. Yeah, that sounds about right. Not the person I used to be. No, things change a lot, actually. It's not very fast, is it? Oh god, it's so slow. It's slower than I remember. Other than that, it handles good. It handles fantastic. Wow. So, yeah. Yeah, so the bad part right now is we have a tailwind, a pretty significant one, and we're still working to do 65. We have to go that way when we hit the interstate. Well, we'll have plenty of time to think about it. This is going to be a long trip to KC. Long trip to Dalton's. Uh. <laughs> Here we go. Prepare yourself, Angus. We're about to merge onto I-35. I'm prepared. I'm ready to die. Okay. Yes. Look at this. Push the clutch in. It goes to push the clutch 
out. We've got some funky EFI stuff going on that I don't love. It's going to take a little while to figure this stuff out. Uh, and I would rather do that around home. Traveled this entire 40 miles from the shop to home, back to the shop, to your place, and then down the interstate. And now we're going to get off the interstate and go get the 98 to go to Dalton's because uh, we're wide open doing 65 down the interstate and we're late. We're like an hour late already and we can't even do the speed limit. That's just the way of the Ranger, man. So is the way of the Ranger pointing towards the 302? It's fantastic. No weird noises. Just old 90s fuel injection issues that I don't want to deal with today. Plus, it's a little cramped in here, and the Oldsmobile is going to be able to do the highway speeds that this truck cannot. Like, we can't get above 65. We're going to crash. <laughs> Dude, look at this. There we go. I had to dump the clutch in second. Besides that, uh, yeah, fixed. <laughs> We're not going to do the old road trip all the way to Kansas City. I don't have time to deal with this thing. We're late already. We're just going to hop in the old reliable, the carbureted car, the 98, and head on down to see Dalton. With that being said, keep an eye on his channel because we're going to be down there to do some racing. We're just helping film, but it should still be a fun time. As for the old Ranger here, like I said, she's just going to be a good daily driver back and forth to town, haul stuff around, haul sticks and things. Beyond all, I am just glad to have it back. Feels good to get back in the truck that I grew up in. Thank you guys very much for joining us on this episode. The best way to support the channel is to check out merch at junkyarddigs.com. We'll see you right here next week for another episode. Peace. Needs a V8.